Greetings my friends, Jimmer Lins here with your motion capture for Source Filmmaker tutorial part 5. Uh, in this one I'm going to show you how to create a character map that will um, map the bones from the animations that you created in Ipisoft to the bones that you have in your Team Fortress 2 models. Uh, there is a link in the video description to a step-by-step -step tutorial that will show you how to do this because I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm simply going to show you what it looks like and then I'm going to show you what the final result is. So in order to do this, what you're going to want to do is uh, start a new project in Motion Builder and in the Asset Browser, find the Characters node and then grab a character and just drag it into the scene. And then you're going to expand the character and double click it if it isn't already up here in the character definition. And if you scroll through, you can see that there are a bunch of uh, bones listed here. The ones that are of most interest are the ones called base, but there's the mapping list and the naming template. Now in order to map the bones, we're going to import the motion file that we, create, that we created earlier. Any motion file you get out of Ipisoft will work because we're not actually interested in the whole motion file, just in the typos at the beginning because that's what contains the bones that we need. So let's see, the, uh, in order to map these things, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the Alt button on my keyboard and then I'm gonna drag the bone in question down to the uh, mapping list. And I'm going to do that, let's see, left upper leg. And remember, this is his left leg, although it's on your right. So you want to make sure you get him right. And it'll say left up leg. If you notice it says left up leg and it says right up leg here, well, you might want to look at that. Uh, left leg is right here. So just alt click each of these. Oops, I've got to click it first and then alt click. I accidentally dragged both. And you get the idea. So you're going to need to, to drag each of these bones to the, uh, to the mapping list. And don't forget about getting things like the toe base and the shoulders and the neck because there are more bones available to be mapped than are in the base group. The base group are the absolute minimum, but you're going to get more realistic animations if you map the rest. Once you have mapped all of them, there's this button here that says Extract Naming Template. And you're going to hit that, and it will say you are about to update the current naming template. And uh, as you can see, it actually said, okay, hips, left up leg, and it, it actually created this naming template. Uh, once you've done that, you can, uh, you can, uh, you'll need to, it doesn't say not set for any of them anymore. Um, excuse me. And then uh, you can uh, click on the character here. And I'm not going to actually export this because I've only mapped like three bones. But if you've mapped the whole skeleton, you select the character in the navigator, then you say file and uh, save selection. Not send to Maya. Okay, save selection. Uh, and then you will want to pick a name for it. I named mine tf 2 charactermapfbx but whatever you want to name it is fine. You know, just give it a name. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and open that one that I created before so you can get a sense of what it looks like. I'm going to open it. Okay. Oh, sometimes you'll get an error, uh, uh, not an error, but a diagnostic pop-up that will say that you're using MB 5.5 limits. You can ignore it. It is a warning because of the BVH file format that comes out of Ipisoft, and uh, it is not something that is going to affect what we're doing as far as I know. I, I've never noticed any adverse effects from it. Okay, so um, you can see here if I expand this character, this is the one I created earlier, uh, yesterday actually, and uh, if you, can, if you look here at the naming template, none of these on the right say not set except for things like the fingers because I didn't map the fingers because I'm not going to be animating fingers because Ipisoft doesn't support it. If I was using higher quality motion capture software that did get my fingers, or actually Ipisoft's very high quality, but if, I, if it had better resolution and could do finger mapping, then I would map the fingers. But the idea here is that now I've got this naming template. And then that location that I saved the, fo the, the file to, um, you're going to want to know where that is because remember before in the previous lesson when we put the medic in the T-pose and then we saved him out as an FBX file, well you're going to want to save this naming template map into the same folder. And you're going to want to probably create one of these for each of the classes. I've only created a couple of them. Um, excuse me, but as you go on and you do new ones, you can reuse them. You don't have to do these steps every time. You can reuse these templates and I'm going to show you that next in part six. Thanks for watching and I hope you're getting a lot out of these tutorials and uh, I look forward to talking to you in uh, part six where we're going to actually uh, bind the animation to a real model and make him walk around a little bit.
I realized after I recorded this that I didn't actually put how to add the path that we just created to the asset browser. So after you have created and exported your medic, and after you have created and exported your naming template, that character map that I showed you uh, just a moment ago, uh, and you know the path it's in, right? So you're going to want to go here to the Asset Browser and just right-click Templates and say Add Favorite Path. And then you're going to want to browse to that folder, wherever it might be, on your computer. And then what will happen is we'll add one of these little folder nodes. And as you can see here, I've got Engineer, because I did an Engineer earlier, Medic, that's my version of that T-Pose Medic that I did, and then TF2 Character Map. And once you have done these, they remain there forever. So you'd only have to do it once. And then in the next tutorial, I will show you how to use these to make your uh, video animation, your, your motion capture animation, incredibly easy. You only have to go through the process of T-posing them once and then creating that mapping template once. And then from then on, you just drag and drop. It'll be very nice. So I will look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Thank you again for watching these. I hope you're getting a lot out of it. I'm Jimmer Linz, and I appreciate it.